was born in Erdington, in Birmingham. My parents were born in Birmingham. All four of my grandparents were born in Birmingham. I never met my great-grandparents. It was in this house on Bleak Hill Road where I learned to speak and to read. My parents would buy me mountains of Peter and Jane books from the corner shop. At nursery I encountered other accents. My best friend at nursery was a boy named Raj Kumar. His accent was very different to mine. I remember the beginnings of structured learning at nursery, the singing of educational songs, some symbol recognition games. But I was learning more about reading at home with my parents. According to mum and dad, the first words I ever read on my own were, ice cream. After nursery, my growing confidence with reading and writing began to cause problems for me. A few hundred yards up the road was Marsh Hill Junior and Infant School. When the staff realised I could already read, I was transferred up a year. I didn't like it. I felt like I was being punished. It was at Marsh Hill where, through the encouragement of excellent teachers, I discovered I could write half-decent poetry. The school entered me for competitions, and my poems appeared in magazines. After Mrs Thatcher came to power, my father was made redundant, and we lost the family home. I lived with my grandmother for a while in Lidget Grove in Erdington. I can remember her old-fashioned way of speaking, with words like nout for nothing and cob for a bread roll. After taking the 11 plus, I attended King Edward VI Grammar School for Boys in Aston. The next few years had the most dramatic effect on my literacy development and helped to shape how I read, write and speak today. It was here where I was introduced to the work of Dickens, Shakespeare, Hardy and Orwell. At the same time, I was introduced to many different accents and dialects. My Latin teacher was Scottish. Many of the boys had families from India and Pakistan. The PE teacher was from Newcastle. All of the boys seemed to be very well spoken. It was over the next seven years that I became very aware of the gap between my council estate upbringing and the upbringing of the boys from Warmley and Sutton Coalfield. We all spoke English, but the way they spoke it seemed to be very different to the way I did. It was while I was at university that I encountered the greatest diversity of accents, dialects and cultural backgrounds. We studied modules about culture and target audience, about German cinema and how everything it did seemed to be a direct reaction against American culture. We looked at how different texts could be interpreted by different people. After university, determined to be a writer, I took nine to five jobs in record shops to pay the rent so I could write. I managed to get an agent in London. I saw six of my articles published, but all of my short stories and my first two novels were rejected. I didn't finish my third novel. It was at this point in my life where I worked hardest to understand what I needed to write for a particular target audience. I had to consider how my text could and would be interpreted. I was writing music journalism, contemporary short stories and hard science fiction novels. I worked hard to familiarise myself with the demands and expectations of each genre. I began my teaching career at City College in Garrett's Green. It's just a pile of rubble now. Working at City College was the first job I had where I could be considered a professional person. Reflecting on this now, I realise how I used my voice differently when I was teaching compared to when I was talking to my manager in her office or my colleagues in the pub. Also, almost all of the students had a strong Birmingham accent which helped us to relate to each other. I quickly realised that these students had no real interest in learning for learning's sake. What I taught them had to be real and relevant and fun. I finally arrived at South Birmingham College in 2008, gaining a full-time post in 2009. I'm learning about teaching and about literacy and language every day. Communication is key to what we do. It's through understanding each learner's personal journey, their cultural and literacy background, that we can communicate and therefore teach more efficiently and successfully. <laughs>